Ever wondered why time only moves forward, not backward? It's a question that has puzzled the greatest minds for centuries. The answer, as it turns out, is intricately linked with an area of physics known as thermodynamics. This field, in essence, studies the movement of energy from one form to another and the laws that govern this transition. Thermodynamics is more than just a subject in your physics textbook. It's a fundamental principle that shapes our universe, from the smallest atoms to the grand cosmic structures. And it's not just about energy. It's also about order and chaos, about the inevitable march of time from the past to the future. But here's the catch. To truly understand why time moves forward, we need to navigate through some complex terrain. We need to dive into the world of enthalpy, entropy, and the laws of thermodynamics. So, are you ready for the journey? To fully grasp this, we need to dive into the world of enthalpy, entropy, and the laws of thermodynamics. Scene script. Picture this, you're boiling water on a stove. But what's really happening on a microscopic level? At its core, this process is a dance of energy transformation, a display of thermodynamics in action. And a key player in this dance is enthalpy. Imagine enthalpy as the total energy in a thermodynamic system. It's like the bank balance of energy for a system, encompassing everything from the kinetic energy of particles to the potential energy stored in chemical bonds. But enthalpy doesn't stop there. It also factors in the work done to create space for the system, pushing aside the surrounding environment to establish its own volume and pressure. To elaborate further, let's break it down into two parts. The first is internal energy, the energy required to create the system. Think of it as the energy cost of assembling all the particles in the system, like the energy required to heat water from room temperature to boiling point. The second part is the energy needed to carve out a space for the system in its environment. This could be the energy required to inflate a balloon or expand steam in a steam engine. This carving out process is crucial because it helps us understand that a system isn't just about what's happening inside, but also how it interacts with and affects its surroundings. Hence, enthalpy is a comprehensive measure of energy in a system. It's the sum of the internal energy and the work done to establish the system's volume and pressure. It's a measure of the total heat content of a system, and it's always conserved, never lost. So when you're boiling that pot of water, the heat from the stove increases the water's internal energy, causing the water molecules to move faster and faster until they break free of steam. That's enthalpy at work, transforming the heat energy from your stove into the kinetic energy of water molecules. So, in simple terms, enthalpy is all about energy and its transformation. It's about how energy moves, changes, and interacts within a system and with its surroundings. It's a fundamental concept in thermodynamics that helps us understand how the universe works. Now imagine a sugar cube dissolving in a cup of tea. What does this tell us about entropy? Well, entropy is a fascinating concept in thermodynamics. It's a measure of the specific ways in which a system may be arranged. Some might even call it a measure of disorder or chaos. But let's not get too dramatic. It's just physics. Think about our sugar cube scenario. We start with a neat, well-ordered sugar cube. But when it dissolves, the sugar molecules spread out in the tea. The sugar's not gone, it's just less ordered. This is an increase in entropy. The sugar has more ways it can arrange itself when it's free-floating in the tea than when it's all crammed into a cube. Entropy is not just about disorder though, it's about possibilities. The more ways something can be arranged, the higher its entropy. A shuffled deck of cards has higher entropy than one sorted by suit and number. Why? because there are far more ways to shuffle a deck randomly than to order it in one specific way. So entropy is about the richness of possibilities. It's about change, movement and transformation. It's about things not staying the same. And in the grand scheme of the universe, entropy is always increasing. That's the second law of thermodynamics, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. You see, when we talk about entropy, we're talking about uncertainty. The more disordered something is, the less certain we are about it. If I look at a dissolved sugar cube in a cup of tea, I can't tell you exactly where each sugar molecule is, but if I have a solid sugar cube, I can say with certainty, the sugar is right there. So, entropy is a measure of our uncertainty. It's about the unknown, the unpredictable, the random. It's a fundamental concept that helps us understand the world around us, from the sugar in our tea to the stars in our universe. 
In essence, entropy is a measure of uncertainty or randomness. Scene script. Have you heard of the saying, energy can neither be created nor destroyed? This isn't just a philosophical musing, but a fundamental law of physics known as the first law of thermodynamics. So, what does this law actually say? In the simplest terms, it states that the total amount of energy in an isolated system remains constant. It's like having a financial budget where you can't magically conjure money out of thin air. You can only spend what you have. Similarly, energy can't be created from nothing, nor can it vanish into oblivion. It can only be transferred or transformed from one form to another. Consider a hot cup of coffee sitting on your desk. Over time, it cools down. Where does its heat go? It doesn't disappear. It spreads into the surrounding environment, warming up the air a little. So the energy isn't lost, it's simply transferred. Or think about a car engine. It doesn't create energy, it transforms it. The chemical energy stored in the fuel is converted into kinetic energy that propels the car forward and thermal energy that heats up the engine. But the first law of thermodynamics isn't just about energy conservation. It also gives us a profound insight into the nature of energy itself. It tells us that energy is a fundamental and indestructible entity of the universe, as integral to its existence as matter itself. So the next time you see a light bulb glow or hear a music player, remember that you're witnessing a dance of energy transformation, choreographed by the first law of thermodynamics. The electricity isn't creating light or sound. It's transforming its own energy into these forms. This is the principle of conservation of energy, the backbone of the first law of thermodynamics. But what about the claim that all things tend towards chaos? This brings us to the second law of thermodynamics, a principle that might seem a bit mysterious, but let's break it down, shall we? The second law of thermodynamics is all about a concept called entropy. Think of entropy as a measure of disorder or randomness in a system. This law states that the total entropy of an isolated system can never decrease over time. This might sound a bit complex, but let's simplify it. Imagine you have a box of puzzle pieces. You shake the box, and each time you do, the pieces move around randomly. Now what are the chances of these pieces falling into place to form the complete picture just by shaking the box? Pretty slim, right? That's entropy at work. The puzzle pieces are more likely to be in a state of disorder rather than order. This is because there are more ways for the pieces to be disordered than ordered. Similarly, in any isolated system, there are more ways for the energy to be spread out than concentrated. So the system naturally tends towards the state where its energy is most spread out. But there's another part to the second law. It also states that the total entropy is constant if, and only if, all processes are reversible. This means if you could somehow shake the box in such a way that you could undo the shake and get the pieces back to their original state, then the entropy would remain the same. But in reality, this is nearly impossible. Most processes are irreversible, and once done, they can't be undone, leading to an increase in entropy. So, in a nutshell, the second law of thermodynamics tells us that systems will naturally progress towards a state of maximum entropy. It's the law that ensures that, left to their own devices, things will tend towards disorder, not order. This means that systems will naturally progress towards a state of maximum entropy. So the next time you see a messy room, you can simply say, ah, the second law of thermodynamics at work. So what have we learned about the intriguing world of thermodynamics? We've navigated the concept of enthalpy, the measure of the total energy of a thermodynamic system. It's the sum of the system's internal energy and the product of its pressure and volume providing crucial understanding in chemical reactions and physical changes. We've delved into the enigma of entropy, the measure of disorder or randomness in a system. It's a key player in the second law of thermodynamics, dictating that in an isolated system, entropy can only increase over time, never decrease. Then we unveiled the first law of thermodynamics, essentially the law of conservation of energy. It asserts that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. And finally, we simplified the second law, affirming that energy transfer or transformation is never 100% efficient and inevitably leads to increased entropy. And there you have it, a peek into the fascinating world of thermodynamics. Subscribe for more because you won't find me later.